I'm Lori with Behavior Education. This is TC from Reach Out Reptiles. Today is Sunday, November 10th, 2019. And in today's edition of Super Dwarf Sunday, I just wanna go over exactly who TC is, where he came from, and a little bit about his color and pattern. I first wanna start out by saying that Tau Seti came from Garrett Hartle at Reach Out Reptiles, and that Tau Seti is here on a training loan. Oh, Tau said he's here to be evaluated for behavior and temperament and trainability. Let's go over a little bit of TC specifics. His name is Tau Seti. I call him TC for short. He's a super dwarf reticulated python. He's a male. His color is platinum. He's 62.5% Kalatoa. And if you want to know what that means, you need to check out Reach Out Reptiles YouTube channel where Garrett has more than one video going over what the percentages of super dwarf reticulated pythons mean, how you get the certain percentages, and what the different localities are, such as Kalatoa. TC was hatched on June 6, 2019, and he arrived July 23, 2019. So he's been here almost four months, and we've done quite a bit of training with him. We've done quite a bit of habituation, and I've done a lot of assessing his behavior and temperament. He's doing very well. Overall, so far, I would say that TC is not super outgoing, but he's not super shy. He's somewhere in the middle, and it kind of depends on his mood, whether he decides he wants to come out and engage with activity or not. On some days, he's very, very, very outgoing, and other days, he would just prefer to stay in his enclosure up on his shelf. A little bit about TC's lineage, and Garrett is great to provide all the information about the animals when you get one from him. He is a super dwarf platinum possible anery. Garrett has information about the different color morphs and patterns on his YouTube channel at Reach Out Reptiles. His sire was 75% Kalatoa platinum, heterozygous for anery. If you don't know what heterozygous and homozygous means, um, Garrett's channel has some genetics videos on it that I would recommend that you watch. His dam was 50% marble, heterozygous for anery, and possibly heterozygous for albino. I know that the marble is a mainland reticulated python trait, and so that means that his mother was 50% mainland. That, in addition to the fact that his father was a 75% super dwarf, makes him a 62.5% super dwarf reticulated python. As you see here on TC's enclosure, I keep a photo of him, I keep his name, I keep all of the pertinent information about him, and then in addition to that, I have a cage card where I also have his information and I keep track of his meals and his sheds. And so since TC arrived, he's been eating a variety of rats and mice and he gets a variety of different size meals. So if we're doing a training day, he might get two or three small food items. And if we're not doing a training day, or if we're doing a training session, but I only plan to do one repetition, TC's just getting one large meal. So he is sometimes getting um, hopper mice, small mice, adult mice, rat pups, um, fuzzy rats, and any combination of all of those together. So for example, TC just ate three days ago and he had one frozen thawed rat pup and one frozen thawed fuzzy mouse. And the reason that he had two food items is we did a target training session and that enabled us to get two repetitions of the training in instead of just one and he did just great. I have checked with our veterinarian and they have told me that it is just fine to give more than one small food item during one feeding session for training. As long as we are not giving him several food items several days in a row. So TC is still getting his one meal every seven to 10 days and he's getting an appropriate sized meal as far as the grams he's ingesting. Sometimes those grams are just all in one rodent and sometimes those grams are divided between two or three rodents. But we are sticking to his normal digestive cycle. We aren't feeding him extra and we aren't feeding him more often for training. We are revolving his training sessions around his normal feedings. When TC is inside of his enclosure at the door and he hasn't come all the way out on his own, I usually use the hook initially to touch him. That is because when we do our training sessions, I usually target train him and feed him right here at the edge of the enclosure. 
Now, some days TC comes completely out of the enclosure on his own to engage with me or to do an activity. And in that case, then I just pick him up once he's out of the enclosure and I don't use the hook at all. I only use the hook if I'm going to remove him from the enclosure, which I really don't do very often. I will actually do that most when we're doing the Super Dwarf Sunday edition so that I can get him out for the camera and everybody gets to see him. I took some video footage of him a couple of weeks ago and I got some really, really, really close up views of his color and pattern and I'm going to insert some of those in this video today. TC has since shed and so he may look a little brighter than he did in the footage I got a couple weeks ago. He did give me another complete shed. Eye caps and the shed was complete from head to tail. I accidentally ripped the head of the shed off when I was taking it out of the enclosure, but it was a complete shed all in one piece. I'm really happy about that. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that he spends so much time either in his water swimming or in his humidity boxes. TC again is a platinum and that is his color. And then I got a lot of close up footage in the other video of his reticulated pattern. Now I want to go over what reticulated means. The definition of reticulated is just a net like pattern over something. And so that word reticulated isn't specific to snakes. That word reticulated means that there's some type of a net like pattern on whatever it is that's being called reticulated. of Tau Ceti and other reticulated pythons or dwarf or super dwarf reticulated pythons, that reticulation is this pattern that you see on them. And I'll talk a little more about that pattern in a voiceover of the video close-ups. But this reticulated pattern, I'm sure, acts as camouflage and helps snakes like TC camouflage themselves from both potential prey and potential predators in their wild environment. As you look at this close-up footage of Tal Seti's color and pattern, keep in mind that he is an alternate color and pattern from what you would see in wild reticulated pythons. Alternate colors and patterns are often called morphs and they're caused by genetic mutations from the wild type color and pattern. His is called platinum. The following is directly from Sid James' book on reticulated pythons. The platinum gene causes an overall lightening of color in retics with higher amounts of yellow. Platinums can have slightly changed patterns with thinner or broken black markings on the back. The yellow in platinum retics gets more intense as the animal grows into adulthood. The platinum gene is very popular either as a single gene or in combination with others, producing beautiful bright retics with clean patterns. I just want to point out here how his lateral pattern differs from his dorsal pattern. If you see the pattern on his sides, they're sort of white ovals outlined in black, and that differs quite a bit from the pattern that goes straight down his back. As you view the slow motion footage of TC moving, you can see how broken up his pattern is on this front part of his body or the anterior part of his body. It's just very blotchy and there's really no set pattern to the gold blotches and the sort of black outlines around it. But as the snake moves and you start to view the pattern closer and closer to the mid part of his body, you can start to see how the pattern coalesces. And at one point, it looks like two half circles that are slightly offset from each other with a black border. And then as you continue to move down his back, more towards the posterior portion of his body, those two half circles start to slide together so they're right across from each other and they have a black line down the middle and then a black outline. This continues to change, and by the time you get all the way to the posterior portion or the last third of Tau Ceti's body, you're going to see that that black line dividing the oval or dividing those blotches goes away. 
the two blotches on the left and right side of his body combine into almost perfect circles with a black outline. Those circles change in pattern as you see him move. You can see some of the circles look like circles. Some of them look like Mickey Mouse ears and some of them look like ovals, but they're all a golden blotch surrounded by a black outline. This pattern's now quite a bit different than the one we started our journey with on the anterior end of his body, where it was just blotchy and there was no set patternation at all, to the middle of his body where we started to see half circles offset from each other and then half circles coming together with a black line dividing them and then the black line disappearing into those circles and hearts and Mickey Mouse ears and ovals that have a golden center and a black outline. Now, if you look here, you can see that Tau Seti's head is almost patternless. It doesn't have any blotches on it. It has a black line down the center of it. And that black line sort of ends in a figure eight or S shape. And then you can see the blotchy pattern and then it starts to form into these half circles and then full circles and heart shapes and Mickey Mouse ears until you get all the way down to his tail. And so it's almost as if each third of his body has a completely different pattern to it as far as those rosettes or blotches. I speculate that the variability in patternation from the anterior to the posterior portion of the body only makes his camouflage more effective. Here you can see that the ventral portion of his body, the underside or the part that's on the ground, has no patternation. It's almost completely white with a pink hue to it. Probably safe to say that reticulated pythons have evolved the specific color and pattern variability that they have in order to thwart the visual perception of potential predators and potential prey that they're trying to camouflage themselves from. I hope you've enjoyed this video. The two things that I just really wanted to go over today were what reticulation means, what that reticulated pattern is, and what that looks like up close. And I thought that that would really be fun for you to see some close-up video of t scenes patterns and markings because they're so gorgeous. And I really think as snakes go, they're unique because they, the pattern and the markings on a reticulated python don't stay the same from head to tail. There's some change in there. And I hope that you were able to see that in the close-up videos. Everybody, thanks so much for watching. Always try to be kind, love your animals, and until next time, this has been Lori with Behavior Education and TC from Reach Out Reptiles.